welcome to another uh, event at community hood today uh, you know we have a very very special guest but before i reveal the guest would love to uh, you know tell you a little bit about myself for people who are joining for the first time i'm nipun goel i'm the founder and ceo of like minds and uh, you know uh, like minds is a software that powers uh, different mobile apps for helping them in launching in app community features like chat and feed uh like this this event is part of uh, this community called community hood which is run by like minds we uh, at community hood we we have about uh, a community of about 1200 community builders and uh, email uh, subscribers of about 10000 community builders uh, you know we love to talk about all things community and uh we we do these uh, you know uh, fortnite events uh in different formats and uh, this format specifically is one of my favorites where you know we get to uh, bring some of the high quality community led business uh, founders and you know we we go uh, you know all in on understanding how they created that business and uh, you know historically we we've, we've had a uh, very interesting uh, conversations that came out and i am sure today's event is also going to you know see very very interesting insights coming from the speaker today and uh, just to you know iterate what we do we 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 are built on three pillars at community wood we love to crowdsource challenges and then you know uh, we love to crowdsource knowledge and then document knowledge so like this is another uh, way of doing the same thing Uh, one of the very common topic that we started seeing uh, you know uh, like in in a lot of interviews that we do with community builders was you know how do you really create a community that can be uh, built in a way which which literally sustains a business and which literally uh, you know becomes like the most important way or uh, to to run uh, a business and we found uh, you know today's uh, speaker to be someone who has done really well in that so without uh, you know taking uh, further time let me quickly introduce uh, vipul uh, vipul agarwal uh, he is the uh, founder and co-founder and ceo of unlu unlu is a uh, it's an online learning and collaboration platform for creators uh, where world's top creators come to learn connect and create it aims to provide creators with opportunities for collaboration learning and exposure as well as means for monetization uh, you know just to sort of add a line here uh, you know like i i was speaking to vipul and he was telling me that they are already hitting close to a 15 crr annual uh, cr uh, annual run rate which is phenomenal uh, given that they have near zero marketing spent uh, you know so uh, you know uh, it's it's lovely to see how someone is building a profitable community led business and vipul is a three times entrepreneur uh, you know uh, done uh, startups in travel sport social uh, and now media tech uh, he considers community as a very very key key growth uh, lever for unlu and, and you know he has previously scaled uh, you know couple of apps to 50 million plus users organically uh, you know uh, and he's been an angel investor with the portfolio across fintech sport tech so yeah uh, welcome vipul lovely to have you here today hello kevin thanks thanks uh, for the introduction nepon uh, like looking forward to kind of share whatever i have learned in last few years by building unlu and other companies so i hope you know next one hour could be as helpful as possible for everyone who is listening to this so yeah hi hello everyone uh, good to meet all of you Hmm. So let's start. So, uh, uh, Vipul would love to know, you know, how has your journey been so far in Unlu, especially from a community perspective? You know, how has that thought process evolved from when you started to, you know, where you are today? Like, how has your community aspect grown, and how has community led to growth for Unlu? Ah, uh, it's a, it's a, a pretty interesting journey from last one and a half year. Uh, again, we have. I think what you see today at Unlu is all being built because of the community that we had in the beginning. So the idea was very simple: is to bring the like-minded people 
and learn from them that what they want what they face you know what problems that they are having and what we can do to solve so the product is just nothing but a iteration of our learnings in last two years uh, when we started we were simple a uh, very simple a uh, video platform where people usually come learn how to create a network how to create how to build a career in a media industry particularly be it a, as a writer as a musician uh, that's how we started it but then eventually these people came in the community uh, given a lot of inputs uh, all of these people have been a large pillar of you know helping us to figure out what we have to build for them so what you see today is largely because of the community that we have all the writers all the musicians who have who, who have been a part of our journey since day one have contributed a lot you know to build this business so yeah that that's why i kindly uh, highly admire the whole uh, community aspect in any any sort of business got it so tell me like you you highlighted about uh, you know uh, inputs into product building uh, what else has the community sort of added value like what were, what would have been ullu without let's say uh, the community and what is it today with the community like can you give like couple of examples where you know you feel community added a lot of value for uh, see again we don't do a lot on the performance marketing our performance marketing budget is almost zero telling her uh, i think the most important thing that the community does to us that go out and talk about us and when they talk about us it brings a lot of people through referral through other channels so 30 35% of the whole contribution in the business that happens is via the community itself and the other part is obviously learning the product itself which i uh, like talked again uh, in the initial time when we had a list of writers a bunch of writers or a bunch of musicians on our platform uh, we we spent a lot of time talking to them every week uh, we spent many hours into just understanding you know what they want what problems are they facing and when you get to know from these people and when you see that you know how many other repeat problems which need to be solved uh, and if you really build your product on top of that you actually been able to get something which people talk about which people refer other people to so it does not help you to build the right product but also in doing the right marketing uh, getting the user the lower cost decrease the cap you know increase the ltv uh, for sure because these people have a higher retention rate uh, there's a certain community they stays in so they they don't want to leave the community itself and just because of that they stay on your product for longer time so the retention goes up the marketing cost goes down you will get the right product the fit happen the referral loop starts to kick in the multiple aspect of building a right community can actually take you uh, take your product to a certain level sure sure i think would love to deep dive into all of them uh, let's let's park that thought you know increasing ltv increasing uh, referrals uh, increasing word of mouth you know would would love to deep dive into that but before that uh, you know uh, would love to know like what are some of the use cases today at unlu where let's say members collaborate with each other uh, you know uh, any any project that have come out uh, you know from the community so i i look at community at a there there are two different ways you know uh, when you look at community from a larger perspective and when you even see people talking about it they say that there is a group where thousands of people or lakhs of people exist you know that might be an open group for anyone to come and join and i i always stayed away from that thought like if you have to make a group you can make that group on a facebook you can make that group on a whatsapp or you know a lot of places but if you all look at your own self you know the kind of groups you have been a part of uh, if you've been a founder then you're the part of the founders group and you don't leave that the perspective you know if you haven't got the value for the next but it is also you won't leave that because there is a certain flow because you know that all the people that i have there are like minded people and i might get something out of them tomorrow you know so that thomas says there that value addition is always there that you want to add value you want to showcase that yes you are also doing something in this area as a founder as a product manager as a community builder right so if you connect with the people that you are in the community with you always stay there for a long period of time so at undu we always stayed away from a open community the community is not been open so we we are not the people who where you gonna see a one lakh or five lakh member you know from all different type of geography or all different type of taste comes on a platform and you know do whatever they want to do but it's a highly curated community like if let's say at umlu the people really want to talk about what they should talk about 
they should talk about creating a music they should talk about creating our movie scripts audio scripts or all the things that we do right so these are the bunch of writers who want to take help of each other who want to help each other who want to collaborate with each other these are the musician who want to collaborate and create new ips new songs eventually so when you put these people together they always know that there is a certain value they keep adding they will keep getting from that particular community you know so that's a whole thought that you built it up so we we haven't scaled to a lakh number as i told but whatever number we are at it's a it's a higher reach in community the place where people collaborate with each other they identify the right member to talk to so if you are a person who who sings well and you sing well in particular classical right i'm the one who can compose classical music for you i'm the one who can compose let's say uh, who can write classical lyrics for you can write lyrics for you then you might want to collaborate with me and eventually create an ip or that collaboration happens in the community if i'm a writer who stuck at some point and i want to take a community feedback that this is a scene i'm stuck at uh, i really want to go on a call with other fellow members understand what the next scene could be to a brainstorming session with them so all of these reasons is why people stick in that community because they know that there's always a certain value they can add and the same thing a certain value they, they can get from the community so this is the whole idea around which we at onlu have built a larger community when we look at your numbers uh, you know when we spoke in our pre event catch up uh, you said your 6 month retention like month 6 retention on the app is 82% and that's primarily because of the community uh can you talk about like what your product would be without the community and with the community even today like in terms of different use cases uh because of which you feel like community is the main reason for this kind of retention see for us community is the super important part i think that the one thing that we have learned uh in the whole process is that collaboration in this market is missing for example if if you have to start a company today right uh, you have to go out and hire someone in tech hire someone in marketing hire someone in content and you have a bunch of platform where you can do that you can go on linkedin you can go on nokri and you can find those people right but if you have to create a music video you need a mm-hmm. lyric writer you need a composer you need a producer and and so many pieces and tell me a place where you can go and find those people sure. there's no place it's all offline pieces if you know people you know people mm-hmm. otherwise they just know no place to go and what we have eventually done is that bring all of those people at one place sure and when these people come to that place and and it's either a repeat cycle if you're on linkedin and you are hiring from linkedin every time you need a hiring need to hiring you have hiring comment you'll go back on linkedin because you are used to it you know that you get the right talent from here and if you're a musician you have to create a song in every month or every two months right so every two months you have to come back and look for a new lyric writer a new composer a new producer got it we have to be here plus the whole fellowship is designed in a way which needs you to have a collaboration like i can't have a singer and tell him that you're going to have a song out of it you know a singer cannot do anything if you don't have a lyric writer so i have to have a three different batches those three people have to collaborate eventually and if the community is not there then the collaboration will not happen so community is a core of the product so for us community is not a force fit community is not a gtm mm-hmm. it's a part of the product so it's more like a you go to a ncr you go to a harvard for them why you go there not because you're going to have some learning out of it you go there because you're going to have a network out of it and the network going to help you in all the things possible like from getting you a job to getting an investment for your round to getting a network around like you know someone who knows someone else and you want to reach them out so all those loops happens with the networking itself so the way we have built the whole community around it's more about helping each other it's more about gratitude it's more about collaborating each other and those three four points kicks in very well and and enlarge the whole outer aspect of what the community can do to a product sure got it so so like just to summarize what i learned uh, was uh, there are use cases which are very natural for your uh, users like uh, let's say someone wants to write a song they need others in the community very often and because of that it literally becomes a repeat use case for them to come back again on the app and find some value from the community so community literally becomes the product uh, you know in a lot of cases in in, in your example and which be, which makes it like a very natural fit compared to let's say you know someone wanting to build a use case which a user can find somewhere else very easily can say but i think it's more about 
you know understanding that what a consumer can get out of the community so if let's say you are building uh, say any brand like you are building for d2c sure uh, and what you want you want all those people to come at a place and i have a great example in that where a d2c brand have built a larger community what they do is that they have a d2c presence they sell their products outside but they have built a community of the people who are interested in ayurveda you know and what those ayurveda people they were getting a lot of classes outside they had a lot of people a lot of places to go to but they started a session like can you have a 28 day challenge where yeah. every day in the morning you have to do this activity and i am going to guide you that activity uh, can you have a let's say a, a, a weekly challenge that what are you eating you gonna update over here what are you eating uh, then the people are using taking help of each other you know uh, what happens it's, it's called a I forgot the thing, but uh, that's a that's a very important part of the community where the two people in the community can be aligned to each other. That I am your responsibility and you are my responsibility. So you are checking in on me. That have you attended like today's class? Accountability partner. Accountability partner, yeah. So all those things eventually, even a D two C brand in Ayurveda, you say there are a bunch of communities out there where people can go out and take a, you know, entry, take a take a input, uh, get a learning. But at the same time, there is a brand who came in. who eventually built a whole d2c community uh, just evolving around ayurveda and have it so much value which they might not getting outside and the people in the community started helping each other so you can build it for any brand like it's not about you cannot build the community for this or that or or you should have a natural use case i'm saying in community you can always find a natural use case but you have to be more relevant to the user you have to be more focused at whom you are getting on the platform the day you will open up the community for everyone and you say today you know, i have hired with a person but at the same time going to get some actor get some musician also in the community and that's where the community started ripping off but if you'll have a focused user and you're giving them enough value they they all going to stick by for sure got it and why like uh, build it inside the app versus doing it on let's say a a third party platform like a whatsapp or a facebook or a slack i think that's a good platform for a building a gtm but i again don't call it a community that's a good gtm anyone who are interested in music might come join a facebook group easily because they are on facebook uh, but those who can really add value you're going to bring them on from facebook and take it on your platform because that's how you can optimize the user most you know you can upsell it you don't have to depend on a third party platform to upsell them and That's your community. Like that's what you're gonna call your community. If it's on Facebook, it's a Facebook community. If it's on WhatsApp, it's a WhatsApp community. And if you're really gonna gonna call that your product have a community, it should be on your product itself because that's where you have a higher touch point with the user. You can literally engage him from the moment he arrives on your platform to all the upselling that you need to do with them and to the eventual result you want out from the user. The LTV could be post very very higher. And plus, Facebook WhatsApp is a very generic community, you know. Uh, and I always say to people like. when you are building a community focused for gtm uh, when it's about bringing everyone in and figuring out who can be whom you can convert for your audience uh, for your sale or whatever you are doing then you should focus on building it on facebook you should focus on building on telegram or whatsapp or whatsoever right but the moment you say that no this is my product people this is the people who are related to my product whom i want to have a conversation with on a more regular basis whom i have a more engagement with provide more value to I think that's when the moment you identify those factors, that's when you have to start pushing your community out and picking out on your platform. Like we have a, we built a community last year only. Right? After one and a half year experiment on the different platforms, getting the right users, that's when we decided that now is the time to have our own community. And I think last year June is when we have launched our own community. Uh, before that, we were also relied on third party platforms. When we had each and every one who joined the classes, uh, just coming there and understanding what value we can add with them and. what more we can provide it to them got it and did you like have these uh, uh, whatsapp groups for each class like was that something yeah that's how we started like every cohort had to had a whatsapp group they were chatting in the whatsapp group but eventually then we shifted that to our community itself like it's more like a slack group but it's now at least be the part of our own ecosystem so you can upsell many things like while you are learning like if you're on whatsapp and if you get some doubt you know so and you want to chat with the mentor then you don't have to come on my product and go back on whatsapp to have a conversation so the touch points the loopholes that you have by shifting multiple products there's a lot of drop offs like we have seen the like even the drop offs have improved pretty much so uh, from 40 45% drop offs to right now we are at 15 20% drop off just in the 
moving from one product to another or one class to another uh one one question on the subscription and you know i want to lay out the numbers for everyone uh, correct me uh, if i'm wrong vipul so uh, about a uh, uh, 100000 you like uh, uh, users would have probably seen your content on the app or your other properties and then about uh, 10 or 1000 people have bought at least one unlu class and about 3000 are uh, f- yeah, like fellowship uh, and like so these 10000 people multiplied were multiplied by 10 that's a number multiplied by 10 is what the actual numbers Not like millions of people have seen the platform uh, so every number is multiplied by 10 <laughs> got it 10000 people have uh, bought the unlu class uh, got eventually be the part of the cohort and now out of that we have seen around 5 to 6% people who have converted in the fellowship and that's also not because we didn't had enough supply that's more because that we have a limited seat like we always make it a more this i was talking about uh, talking about this to you also in the last call that we had that you have a seats uh, so every time if you have a more supply like even if you have supply of 20 uh, make it a 10 seats available if you have a supply of 10 make a five seats available the moment you start doing it uh, it obviously might not showcase the result initially but in long term it, it showcase like you know why i don't get a seat why i don't get a seat so that that trigger like when you book a flight you know you see that there's a one seat left there's a five seat left Sure. that triggers a lot of thing and and that actually that that does two thing that make it more aspirational uh, that people want to do it and they feel that oh shit how can i get into it and second it drives more conversation around it more and more people talks about it so sure. and this this overall helps you again this helps you more in the brand building activity and that feeling of i have earned earned a membership is is also very yeah. important in creating It's that thing yeah yeah got it and and so so let's say out of a uh, uh, 100000 users these are like who have paid they can see the content in the community and these 5 6 or 1000 uh, people can create content in the community right yeah got it so so tell me like these are all like subscription based uh, products right uh, the fellowship one like uh, so how does that yeah, work for you on look class on look class is a lower atv sure so so how does that work for you you know in terms of the duration of the subscription do you think uh, you know having let's say a, a smaller duration to like at least get people over the line to try it out versus having a longer duration to really make it uh, you know exclusive and uh, you know uh, something that will have lower drop offs uh, what's your view on let's say monthly membership versus an annual membership or like what's the ideal time period according to you and what is it that you have today in terms of the pricing now we do a annual membership uh and and see i think this is the first time i even heard and thought of it i i had never thought about do i have to make my business a one month product or a three month product or a six month product in order to optimize on the subscription revenue the whole Design of a fellowship happens in a way that how long does it take for a person to create an IP? Mm. If you are a script writer and if you take a seven month or eight month to create an IP, then say eight month product that you're gonna buy. If you know, if it's a if it's a audio writer who just like who just want a month to create an IP, then it's a one month product that someone gonna buy. So that is how that we define that how long we gonna take it for. Because you get that value in one month. You know, you come back and do it. Another time, you come back and do it another. Repeat rate is repeat rate goes pretty high. So again, we are not in a business of teaching. We don't teach you how to become a writer. What we do, we help you create an IP. So the moment you sold and created first IP, you come back again in the same fellowship and say, I want to create a new IP. I want to create a third IP, fourth IP. Then the repeat rate goes up. So it's. I think the more focus should be not on optimizing these metrics. Obviously, this become a part of it, but optimizing the end goal. You know sure. how well you can achieve it. in what time you can achieve it and if you place your product nicely for these people to achieve it on a with like right time in a right amount and makes a difference eventually i think that that's what gonna run the whole cycle in loop instead of you know you optimizing it for should i have a monthly subscription or have an annual subscription sure sure got it so duration is completely defined by the goal and you know goals would change for different fellows and company different person yeah like for a different company like If you are in tech business, you want to build sure. a community of techies, or you might want to just train for a month and then get them placed, right? So it is completely where you are. 
understood understood got it the last section i want to cover uh, you know in our conversation is something which i am very very uh, you know impressed with is is the ability of doing partnerships uh, you have you have shown i think you you you've sort of done partnerships with a lot of amazing celebrities you've done partnerships with you know people who buy uh, content or who who uh, get like who who gives work to your community members can you talk about like one what kind of partnerships you've done and then you know would love to know how some of those uh, you know really happened and can we have some learnings for for the other community builders uh yeah like uh, i think that that's one of the mode for us also uh, that's that's one thing which drives a lot in the community and that's that's one thing which i also talk about a lot because while you are building a community what we end up on focusing on is that how many users are we getting you know in seed of not what we're supplying to the users that we have i say if you have 50 people right now you add value in their life you bring them all the right thing that they need and they will bring more five thousand people on your platform Mm-hmm. But the moment you focus first on getting fifty thousand and not worrying about what they're getting as their output, those fifty thousand will eventually leave, and it's very hard to bring them back. So, I think the one thing which is our uh, in our business is not very much cracked is like we don't know how to do a performance marketing, you know, or do a CAC LTV business. We are mostly relying on referral talent shows on all sort of partnerships, you know, that defines more distribution that brings more creator. We had never. try to get trapped in a in a cackle tv business right they were spending 2000 rupees to earn 500 rupees or 1000 rupees at the end of it i will have mostly focus on partnerships both in terms of how to acquire users and also what you are delivering to them i think from the day we had 500 creators is from the day we started going out in the market and saying that what we can do for this five people you know uh, what value are we going to add like even the 50 people what value we going to add uh can you create a song can you license those song can you make them earn some money out of it you know? and the moment you actually build that loop where these people are making money out of it like 50 plus percent is on our uh, of the fellows on the platform have made their money back for the investment in the fellowship and even more than that mm-hmm. you know so that's how you see it and those people are the one who are going to talk more about in the market who gonna who are the one who gonna repeat the fellowships who are the one who brings more you know more more channels to you to to kind of grow fast uh, on the partnership side See, it's just a simple business. Like we create music, we create scripts, and that's what we have to license. So anyone who need those things, like um, from the ad agencies who might need the background music to for their advertisement to the people who want to buy audio scripts, you know, for their distribution platform to the uh, production houses who want to buy a movie script to the uh, production houses who want to buy a song for their movie, you know. So all those partnerships we cracked in two ways. Like for me, it was a simple strategy. I want to bring them on board uh, by one way or another. So. all the small companies being there uh, who were growing who were expanding in their uh, in their area i joined them as, them as an angel investor initially so that obviously gives you some certain edge uh, plus all the people who i thought could be a potential partner for us long time but they were big enough from us i have taken a small check from them so just to make sure that they are interest always aligned with us so have done couple of such things on both side and then those people have started to loop those people have started introducing introducing us in the ecosystem like see with me i don't come from a media background you know it's a i've just made my way from here like from being a first job at a call center to here i am building a media tech business and so for me there's hardly any network that i have on uh, it's all what i made by going on linkedin going on twitter trying to get those five minutes with them trying to get those 10 minutes with them so i think what you have to optimize is for two things one that how you can convince someone in those five to 10 minutes and second is that how you can get those five to 10 minutes and that's what took almost 6 7 years for me to and kind of poke everyone reach out to get into that space but i think the moment you crack those first five people uh, who gonna brag about you in the market that's where your journey both ends and starts Sure. How did you manage to like onboard uh, celebrities uh, early on? You know, and and you didn't pay a lot of money to them, right? So, so the same thing. Uh, network counts. At the moment, you go to these people via agencies, via multiple channels in between. Uh, it becomes a very transactional deal, right? And the moment it's a transactional deal, it it, it just the thing that you want to optimize is. not for what you are delivering but what you are getting you know so as an artist what you say as an artist manager what you say that it's one day of my artist 
which cost in the market a 1.5 to 2 crore or 3 crore so if you are giving me that then i am okay i am meant to do that but again given that where we are we are most poofed up we don't have that much money to go out then the second factor that comes in that what value are you adding you know is the value worth a day so what we pitch to everyone is the value that we are creating like we are saying that you are the one who are outside you know who have built your career in this mm-hmm. don't you want more and more people to know how it happened don't you want more people to come and you know come in this space and make moves out of from your learning so if you have taken a 10 20 years to learn those few lessons you know do you want to pass out those lessons to these new creators and the moment you talk value either in terms of transaction or in terms of emotion or in terms of value add you know that's where you make a difference so i think that's what bring many of the artists on the platform and then the story evolves then people get to know that yes one was building this that's the eventual idea and they're helping people out in the market so more and more artists want to join and when artists want to join you kind of shifted the whole gear from you wanting them to come on the platform to them wanting to come on your platform and that's where the whole cost of artist acquisition to content production goes down all right uh, you know uh, would love to have you guys uh, keep showing up in our events uh, it's it's just you guys who help us you know with these questions like lot of these questions we got from others even before the event so if you also have any such question that we are like we can ask in any of our future events feel free to drop me an email like i think you get these emails around events feel free to reply on that i'm more than happy to pick questions from from what you guys want